Thank you so much. Thank you very much thank for coming. You. And thank you for having me here. It's, it's a great pleasure to be in Cluj today, and I, I'm really happy. I mean, you know, uh, thank you all for, for losing the, the great uh, weather outside. I mean, it's, it's really gorgeous here in Cluj, and uh, joining me in, uh, joining us in this room. So I'm, I'm a big fool of, uh, I'm, I'm fooling for, um, uh, I'm falling for uh, focus. So I really believe in focus. So everybody's telling us what to do to have a successful company, and that's great. But I, I always like to kind of slice things around and see what is, uh, what, what, what are the, the small slices one can do to be successful. And I'm going to focus today only on migrating from Romania to Silicon Valley. So my one minute of glory telling you, you know, what GCAD is all about and everything, you know, since I'm here just to, to brag a little bit. So GCAD is, is a VC. It's a VC for startups. We are um, investing in companies from early stage on. Um, now, there, as you know, maybe there, there are two kinds of VCs. There are the spray and pray VC, uh, funds that are spraying money into a lot of startups and then hope for the, for the best and hope that the startups are going to grow and bring a lot of money. And statistically, it works. I mean, if you invest in 100 startups, you know, five, six of them are, are going to just become really big and you're going to get your money back and, and the profits. And there are the uh, VCs that are taking the driver's seat in the company. And that's what we are. We, are, uh, we have an investment strategy and we believe that a company uh, should be born in, where the hell is this, should be born in Romania. Because the technical talent is here, here's where the ideas are, and you know, it's, it's great. And we're backing this with money. And then the next seed is also for Romania. Uh, and you need to, to start in Romania because Romania is a small market. And that, that has two things. One is that if you fail, you, you don't really lose much. Plus that Romania is a very permissive market, so it allows you to, to do mistakes and, you know, start all over again. And all the companies that we started, you know, we failed and we pivoted and we started again. And Romania is a very, very permissive market with the Romanian startups. Uh, moreover, it's very familiar to us. I mean, look, we are Romanians. Why would we start selling things uh, in Silicon Valley to start with since we don't know what the hell is there? But then the, the, there's a time coming when you need to move bigger and you need to grow. You need to outgrow Romania, you need to go global and to get to Silicon Valley. And that's what we are gonna speak today. Now, what, uh, when do we want to migrate? When the company is profitable. You don't want to migrate to make profits. You don't want to migrate to try things. You don't start by migrating. You are migrating when your company is big. When your company wants to grow and to outgrow its Romanian opportunities. <clears throat> you have a clear focus. You don't go there to, to focus. Now this is when. And you move when you are big enough to swallow such a move, because it's not easy. And we're going to speak about the challenges to move. Now, one word of advice. Silicon Valley is not the answer for everything. Silicon Valley is not the right place to move for all the companies. Maybe if you are a startup in agriculture, you want to move somewhere else. If you are in fintech, you want to move in New York. But if you're a software company, like probably what we are here today, like a cloud, you know, uh, big data, apps, uh, wearables, these kind of things, Silicon Valley is the place. Now, why do you want to migrate in Silicon Valley? Because that's where your market is. No, American market is the biggest market in the world. And if the market is there, you want to be there. You want to be close to your market to better understand and everything that my, my uh, fellow uh, speakers spoke about. You want to be there because this is where your investors are. The US and spe especially the Silicon Valley is where the most active investors in this area are. 
So you want to be close to your investors because they invest as open-minded as they are. And you think that they are open-minded, and they are open-minded, but they like to invest in companies where they put their arms around them. So they want and they love to invest in Silicon Valley companies. <clears throat> the culture is very modern, is very mature. It's a culture where people like to fail and rise again and try again. And you want to be there and share this, this culture. That is where your talent is. So look, we are struggling around. Florin was asked, you know, what is your biggest uh, threat? What's your bigger challenge here? To find talent. It's very hard to find technical talent in Romania, and we are a technology country. So imagine how it is in Romania to find business talent, marketing talent, and all this financial global knowledge, and all this is there. You want to be there. Nevertheless, you may want to sell your company and to, I mean, at the end of the day, the, the startup guys are, are dreaming for the day when uh, we're gonna make the big bucks. And when, when do you make the big bucks when Facebook is gonna come and acquire you for half a billion? So that's kind of what we're all dreaming about. And the exit opportunities are there. They're not here in Romania, unfortunately, not even in Europe, not even in the US. They're in Silicon Valley. <clears throat> Now, there are challenges to get there. And there are three kinds of challenges. And I think that's what I want to share with you today. There are three kinds of challenges. There are internal challenges, the problems that the company has to move there internally. What are the problems that I need to overcome in order to, you know, get my suitcase from Bucharest, Romania, and, you know, go there and move into Silicon Valley? And bam, I have a company there. That's not true, there are huge challenges. And there are also external challenges, like what, uh, what the world is saying about us, what should I be prepared for, and so on. There are regulatory uh, challenges, because you know it's not the same law in the US and here and others. And uh, there are very strategic challenges also. Let's take, take them one by one. So let's speak about internal challenges. So I guess the biggest challenge, and that's, that's all over, the biggest challenge is for the team to understand the, uh, uh, the value of the migration. Now remember what I said when we move. We move when we have a company that is mature, a company that is uh, grown, a company that is profitable. So you have a team here in Romania that is a great team because you know they, they created a company that is profitable, which is a challenge by itself. Now you go back to that team and say, hey, thank you for this. You are a great team, you created a profitable company, big success, focus, all the, all the, the good stuff. Now we need to move in the US and therefore I'm getting a new layer of, manage, of management on top of you and they're gonna say, what the hell? Why in the world do we need now to respond to new management? Didn't we do enough? Yeah, you do. Didn't we do the right thing? Did we do mistakes or anything? No, you did great. Actually, we did great. So, you know, the question then is, so if we did great, you know, why, the, why in the world do you punish us? Now, this is not a punishment. This is for the better of the company. This adds value to your work. And this actually gets the company and your work to the next level. This is gonna empower you, the team that did great until now, it's gonna empower you to do better things and to do more things and do this globally. And yes, you did a global-ish company until now, but let's hit the big thing. Let's understand that this thing has a real value. And they say, okay, okay, okay. And tomorrow they come back and say, yeah, but you know, we did great until now. Why do you punish, punish us? And you got to say, yeah, this is not a punishment, you know. Let's take an example. We want to get big and, you know, we want to get listed on NASDAQ. Can you do this? No, nah, not really. So let's, you know, let's get people to help us do this. 
So that's a big challenge. I mean, understanding the value of migration is something that needs to be in your head and needs to be shared, like really shared and acknowledged and swallowed and dreamed by, by any person in the team. Then there's going to be a lot of resistance in the team. There's going to be resistance to challenge in general, to change in general. So nobody likes change but a wet baby. But other than this, nobody is going to like change. So the company is profitable. The company is doing great. It's in the comfort zone. Why in the world anybody would want to take up new challenges, to take up changes that are risky, like any change, changes that are going to get everybody out of their comfort zone, are going to make people, you know, think and work, God forbid, and, you know, do stuff that are unknown. Um, so they, they wouldn't want. There are, of course, cultural differences. Now, the cultural differences you cannot understand until you see them. Because the guys there on the other side of, of the pond do some things different. Now, you know, we eat sarmale, they eat you know, hamburgers. I'm not saying which one is better. I'm just saying we are doing things differently. You know, uh, they would want acknowledgement. We speak that, you know, they, they tell you do something. The way we do it, this is we start doing it, and five days later we deliver. But they're going to just get crazy. In these five days, they're, they're not going to know if you got the email. They're used to things like acknowledgement. Yes, sir, I got the email. You know, I'm going to work on it. Five days later, I'm going to deliver. These are all small things, very small things, but very important. All these differences um, are important, and they need to be um, overcome. Like, you know this, this saying that every Romanian is more clever than any American? Any Americans in the hall, by the way? Yeah, no, not really. Thank you, thank you. So, you know, they say that every Romanian is it's, it's more clever than any American, but any five Americans are more clever than any five Romanians. So these guys really know how to work in team. And, you know, unfortunately, we need to learn this. And it's great that, that we have the opportunity to learn and to, to do this thing better, but... Uh, it's, it's a big challenge. Now, all this uh, corporate governance thing that they know how to do it, and we have this lasa kamerja shasha kind of thing, um, and they learned all this financial and management stuff from their parents, uh, and, and they know it. We didn't know uh, when we were youngsters, we didn't know to invest on the stock exchange and so on. So all, this, uh, all these things are really important internal challenges that need to be overcome. Of course, um, everybody is going to say, what about me? What's going to happen to my chair? What's going to happen to you know, my job? Am I going to have a job after moving, after the new uh, management is going to come? You need to explain, and everybody needs to be on board and understand the value of this migration. Now, there are external challenges. Um, there are a lot of them. Now, the biggest one is that you don't really know how to do this. In the last years, there are a few role models, and that's great. Um, Florin, it's, it's, it's a huge example. You know, we did a few companies, and there are others, like LightRail, Uberview. There are great companies that did this, and we can look up to them and understand uh, what they did good, what they did bad. But there are still too few role models. There need to be more. Now, the image of Romania is not bad in the U.S., but it's not necessarily good. They don't really know where we are. So 
in, in such a competitive environment as Silicon Valley is, them not, not knowing where we are, it's, it's not good. So to give you an example, when we got there with one company, we wanted to attack the, the best CEO. And we did have the money and everything. We went to the best headhunter, attract the best CEO, and he liked the project and everything. You know, one, one month later, the guy stepped back, and I was scared shit. Like, you know, why do you not join? And the guy said, look, Rado, I'm sorry. The, the company is great. The project is great. The, everything sums up completely. But I had this perception that I cannot pass by that, you know, you, the Russian oligarch, yeah, we have Russian accent and everything. We are kind of close to Russia. So you, the Russian oligarch, you know, have this dream of getting a company in the, in the US. And uh, it's going to be hard. Yeah, we all know it's going to be hard. And one year later, you're going to get back your, uh, change your mind and get your company back to Romania. And I'm going to have uh, something bad on my CV. And I don't want to do this. I was trying to tell the guy, you know, look, Romania is not Russia, and don't judge, and all these things. But the guy said, I know everything, and I spoke to the team, and it's all great, but I have this perception, and I cannot overcome it. I'm sorry. So this thing needs to, to, to be worked on, you know, getting U.S. Um, investment fund, getting U.S. Um, board of advisors, and so on, just to clean up this perception. <clears throat> Let's get into uh, strategic uh, challenges. Now, the, I, I'm going to get over regulatory and everything and focus on the biggest strategic challenge that, that, uh, that I saw, which is the team is going to fight this change. Everybody's going to understand. Everybody's going to say, OK. In good faith, they're going to understand and say, OK. But they're going to fight it, tooth and nail. What's going to happen is that the new management is going to do things different than the way you did them. You did the things. And the team is going to get scared. They're going to say, look. This is not how things are being done in this industry. You don't know. We know because we did them this way for five years. But guess what? That's why you brought the new team. You brought them to make things different, to change the company. And they're going to fail. They're going to fail badly. And people are going to come, people from the old team are going to come and say, whoa, look at the mistakes that these guys are doing. Then you have two choices. One of the choices is, is to go back to them and say, look, you are doing this mistake. Please do it differently. The other choice is let them fail. Let them fail and understand. Maybe it is a mistake. And you know, they're clever people. They're not dumb. They're clever people. They're going to understand. They're going to change. And they're going to do things better and better and better. And then, boom, great. Or, God forbid, they were right. And we were doing things different, we said, better. But actually, the way they're doing the things is better. So all these things are very important. They need to be let do their mistakes, let them understand, and give the company one year to be reshaped in, their, in, the, in the new form. For this, you need investment. That's why you need your A round, coming back to the initial uh, spreadsheet. <clears throat> Getting to the, to the main points that I'm, uh, I'm making here for you. One is you got to pick the place where your headquarters should be for your global expansion. 
For some of us, it's Silicon Valley. For some others, it's New York or Boston or whatever. So pick your place. Then, you know, get the A round and move there. Move there. Just close your eyes, move there. It's not bad. Just move there. But only if and when you are ready. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Radu. That was, that was really impressive. And I feel like no, a lot please. of the entrepreneurs in the audience should write you a check once they succeed. Oh. Because I think it was a very important <laughs> advice. Yes, please. Should I give us the address? Maybe it's the other way around. You need to give them a check. I'd love so, to. Either way. So I think while we're setting up the next panel here, I'd like to take uh, one question from the audience. So if anybody has a question, the first one who raises their hand. So OK. So let's uh, have a microphone over there. Where's the guy with the microphone over there in like the fifth row or so on from this side? We should have a question. I'll just come up here and ask the question. We'll, we'll repeat it. So just come here forward to the stage, and then we we'll repeat when it for the. Ready? Sorry? When are you ready? When, are, when, are you he, when is he ready? When is a company ready? A, a company is ready when it's profitable. A company is ready for move when it's profitable, when it's focused, when it has a great team. It's ready when. Um, Oh, actually, I just have something there. There. Uh, when you have an USB, when everything. So you are ready. When you are going to be ready, you are going to know that you are ready. It's that easy. Thank you very much. Okay.